Over the past decade, SpaceX has revolutionized spaceflight, turning ambitious dreams into reality at an unprecedented pace. From developing reusable rockets to pioneering private space travel, the company has consistently pushed the boundaries of what is possible. One of its most daring innovations is Mechazilla, a towering mechanical system designed to catch Starship's massive booster in midair using robotic arms. This bold concept captured the world's imagination, promising to eliminate the need for traditional landing legs and streamline the recovery of rockets. However, despite its ingenuity, Mechazilla presented some significant engineering challenges. What are those challenges and are there any solutions for them? We'll get into all that in today's episode of Alpha Tech. This is a historic moment in space history as SpaceX has successfully caught the super heavy booster for the first time, an achievement that many thought never possible. Of course, SpaceX doesn't just want to do this a few times. They aim to completely revolutionize the booster recovery process by eliminating the need for traditional landing legs. However, after the first catch on Flight 5, it wasn't until Flight 7 that SpaceX attempted the maneuver again, highlighting that implementing the catch method has proven to be one of SpaceX's most formidable challenges. One of the most difficult aspects of catching a descending rocket booster is the requirement for near instantaneous alignment between the rocket and Mechazilla's arms. Unlike regular landings, when minor course corrections can be made up until touchdown, Mechazilla's catching leaves no room for error. The booster must arrive at exactly the right place at precisely the right moment with its velocity and orientation perfectly controlled. A fraction of a second delay or even the slightest misalignment could result in a failed capture, potentially destroying both the booster and the catching system. Additionally, the scale of Super Heavy's descent makes the challenge even greater. The booster comes back from space at a high velocity, requiring precise engine burns to slow down for capture. The 33 Raptors, each producing over 500,000 pounds of thrust, must fire in perfect harmony to guide the booster into the Mechazilla's grasp. Any imbalance or miscalculation could lead to excessive lateral motion, making a clean catch impossible. Another major issue affecting Mechazilla's feasibility is environmental unpredictability, particularly the wind. SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas is situated along the Gulf Coast, an area known for frequent and sudden wind shifts. Even a moderate gust can push a descending booster slightly off course, throwing off its alignment with Mechazilla's arms. Unlike Falcon 9, which can land on solid ground or a moving drone ship that can reposition itself, Mechazilla's arms are fixed, meaning that the booster must adapt to changing wind conditions in real time, adding a layer of difficulty. The unpredictability of coastal winds makes the already difficult task of catching a massive rocket even riskier, increasing the likelihood of failure. Beyond just timing and weather, the physical forces involved in catching a rocket in midair are extraordinary. When super heavy descends, it carries an enormous amount of kinetic energy, which must be safely absorbed and dissipated upon capture. The mechanical arms of Mechazilla need to be strong enough to withstand the impact force, but also flexible enough to prevent damage to both the booster and the tower itself. This balancing act between rigidity and flexibility has proven to be an immense challenge. If the arms are too rigid, the shock of impact could damage the booster structure, making it unusable for future flights. If they are too flexible, the booster could move unpredictably during capture, increasing the risk of failure. Engineering a system that can handle these extreme forces while maintaining precision control has required SpaceX to explore new materials, advanced hydraulics, and shock absorption systems, many of which introduce additional complexity and potential failure points. Given these challenges, SpaceX has recognized that while Mechazilla is an engineering marvel, it might not be the most practical solution for booster recovery. The difficulties in timing, weather adaptation, and structural impact impact management have led the company to explore alternative methods prioritizing reliability over spectacle. Instead of relying solely on Mechazilla, SpaceX is now investing drone ship landings as a potential solution for recovering super heavy boosters, an approach that builds on the proven success of Falcon 9 while addressing the unique demands of Starship's massive scale. But after all, the development of Mechazilla has provided invaluable lessons in precision landing and rocket recovery. Although it'll still play a role in future missions, I believe that given the limitations of this method, SpaceX has surely been considering new approaches, as mentioned earlier, or perhaps a seamless combination of both methods. The ultimate goal is to ensure booster recovery is both safe and repeatable, bringing humanity one step closer to fully reusable spaceflight. 
So far, SpaceX has successfully caught Super Heavy twice since testing started. This demonstrates their deep technical understanding of the catching process and integration of Mechazilla with the booster's hardware. And the next major milestone they need to reach is catching the second stage of Starship. To achieve this, SpaceX has been continuously refining the launch tower and surrounding infrastructure at the only operational launch pad at Starbase. Their progress is undeniable. However, this advancement is not only reflected in individual launches, but also in the increasing frequency with which SpaceX stacks rockets over time. The upper stage of Starship has a fuel tank big enough to place large objects into a stable orbit and return. And if it intends to carry payload to Mars, the Moon, or a Lagrange point where we have the greatest need for a vehicle capable of transporting loads of hundreds of tons, it needs to be able to consume more fuel. You'd want to complete this job as quickly as possible if you have anything living there, because the more supplies they need to get through the refueling process, the more fuel they have to take to know where they're going. The only current way we have to provide it with that amount of fuel is by using oil tankers launched from the same base that Starship has done. In theory, they could assemble all of them at once and move them out one pad at a time, but that means they'll need more than a dozen stages below and upper stages to support each upper stage of Starship, and the potential cost advantage of the system will largely evaporate. The ideal cost would be to have one Starship, an oil tanker, and one booster, with the latter two flying multiple times each day. If that's successful, it could bring rocket launch costs at unprecedented lows. However, it won't be efficient if the overall turnaround time for checks, stacking, and fueling the oil tanker takes too long. While currently, there's not much that can be done to reduce the time needed for checks and refueling. That's why the increasing frequency of stacking over time will help SpaceX optimize part of the time to achieve the most efficient performance for Starship. Besides improving the increasing frequency of Starship stacking, we must also praise the smooth catching mechanism that SpaceX has implemented for Starship and Mechazilla. The first aspect of Starship's catching mechanism is construction. Mechazilla consists of three main parts. The first and most visible are its two metal arms, each extending approximately 36 meters. These arms serve the crucial function of catching both the booster and upper stage while also facilitating stacking. Their significant length ensures a safe clearance from the tower and allows for precise maneuvering when placing the booster onto the launch mount. The second key component is the large carriage, a robust metal framework that connects the arms to the launch tower. This carriage is attached at three points along three of the four corners of the orbital launch tower, ensuring stability and structural integrity. Throughout the system, an array of hydraulic mechanisms plays an essential role in controlling the movement and securing each stage of Starship. Now, let's look at the movement capabilities of Mechazilla. Mechazilla's ability to move vertically along the launch tower is a critical aspect of its design. The metal arms attached to the carriage utilize large bearings at multiple contact points along the tower, allowing controlled movement up and down. This movement is further regulated by a system of pulleys and cables positioned at the top of the tower. These pulleys guide a large cable connected to the catching mechanism, ensuring smooth and precise ascent and descent. This vertical mobility is crucial for catching and stacking operations. During recovery, the arms will likely adjust their positions slightly to accommodate the decelerating booster or upper stage, reducing the mechanical stress on both Mechazilla and the vehicle. Additionally, once the stage is successfully caught, the arms must move to the correct height, first to align the booster with the launch mount and then to position the Starship upper stage atop the booster. The next aspect of Starship's catching mechanism is the ability to open and close. To enhance the precision and feasibility of catching a descending stage, Mechazilla is designed with an opening and closing mechanism. When fully closed, the arm spans slightly more than the width of both Super Heavy and Starship. If left in the position during descent, it would be nearly impossible for the vehicle to align perfectly within such a narrow gap. Instead, the arms remain wide open during the final approach, giving the rocket a more forgiving target. Once the majority of the stage has moved between the arms, they close around the vehicle, securing it at designated load points across the top of each stage. This design introduces a margin of error, making the process more reliable. The final feature of Mechazilla that I want to mention is the rotation from side to side. Both arms will be capable of rotating over the launch mount and off to the side of the launch tower. This partial rotation angle will help during the catching and stacking process. Rather than Super Heavy and Starship coming in for a landing over the launch mount, they're going to try off to the side. This helps ensure nothing is damaged by the engines or a possible failure. Of course, with all the impressive aspects we've discussed, we cannot overlook the brilliant idea that gave birth to the massive launch tower, affectionately known as Mechazilla. 
It's Elon's quirky creation since he announced catching Starship with chopsticks. Honestly, many of us still can't fully grasp Elon's intentions when building Mechazilla as it looks unlike anything that has ever been built. Not to keep you waiting, recent revelations about it have been disclosed in Walter Isaacson's best-selling biography on Elon Musk. The story of the chopsticks had begun eight months earlier, at the end of 2020, when the SpaceX team was discussing the landing legs being planned for Starship. Elon's guiding principle then was rapid reusability, which he often declared as the holy grail for making humans a spacefaring civilization. In other words, rockets should be like airplanes. They need to take off land and then take off again as soon as possible. Falcon 9 has become the world's only rapid reusable rocket. The video feeds of the fiery yet gentle landing still make Elon leap from his chair. Nevertheless, he was not enamored with the landing legs being planned for Starship's booster. They added weight and thus cutting the size of the payloads the booster could lift. Why don't we try to use the power to catch it, he asked. He was referring to the tower that holds the rocket on the launch pad. Elon's already come up with the idea of using that tower to stack the rocket. It's got a set of arms that could pick up the first stage booster, put it on the launch mount, then pick up the second stage spacecraft, and then place that on top of the booster. Now he was suggesting that these arms could also be used to catch the booster when it came back to Earth. It was a wild idea, and there was a lot of consternation in the room. If the booster comes back down to the tower and crashes into it, you can't launch the next rocket for a long time, Bill Riley says, but we agreed to study different ways to do it. A few weeks later, just after Christmas in 2020, the team gathered to brainstorm. Most engineers argued against trying to use the tower to catch the booster. The stacking arms were already dangerously complex. After more than an hour of arguing, a consensus was forming to stick with the old idea of putting landing legs on the booster. But Steve Harlow, the vehicle's engineering director, kept arguing for the more audacious approach. We have this tower, so why not try to use it? After another hour of debate, Elon stepped in. Harlow, you're on board with this plan, he said, so why don't you be in charge of it? As soon as he made the decision, Elon switched into silly humor mode. He began laughing about the scene in The Karate Kid where a karate master, Mr. Miyagi, uses a pair of chopsticks to catch a fly. The tower arms, Elon said, would be called the chopsticks, and he dubbed the whole tower Mechazilla, celebrating with a tweet, we're going to try and catch the booster with a launch tower arm. When asked by a follower why he didn't just use landing legs, Elon responded, Legs would certainly work, but the best part is no part. On a hot Wednesday afternoon in late July 2021, the final segment of Mechazilla with the movable chopstick arms was put in place at the Boca Chica launch site. When his team showed him an animation of the device, Elon got excited. Kick ass, he shouted. The viewership on this one's going to be huge. He found a two-minute clip from Karate Kid and tweeted it out from his iPhone. SpaceX will try to catch the largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks, he said. Success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.